In this example, I have a box sliding up a ramp and slowing down, and then it turns around and comes back down the ramp. And I want to figure out a number on the, the two different accelerations. So one thing I forgot to put in here is I should probably have a kinetic friction coefficient. So I'll just make it 0.15. there's that and we start the analysis by putting force vectors in so there's the force of gravity down always pulling down I'll go ahead and put it in the second diagram while I'm at it all right that needs to be decomposed on those tilted axes that I already placed in the diagram so we're going to get a perpendicular component of the force of gravity roughly like that. Remember that this angle here is the same as the angle of incline. That means that component has a magnitude of mg cosine theta. Then I have my parallel component pointing down the ramp roughly that long. That's an mg sine theta. And it's starting to get obliterated, but the, the numerical value for the mass is 3 kilograms, if that's hard to see. And then I have a normal force. And this is enforcing the fact that the, the block is constrained to the surface of the ramp. So there can't be any acceleration perpendicular, so the normal force is going to be equal to mg cosine theta. That's the same in this case as well. And then we get to the critical physical difference between these two problems, and that is the direction of the friction vector. So if a block is sliding up a ramp, friction points in the direction that opposes the direction of the slipping. So my kinetic friction vector, I'm going to go ahead and write a little bit about it. It's mu k times n points down the ramp as the block slides up the ramp. <clears throat> but as the block slides down the ramp, the friction force changes directions to oppose the slipping. And I get fk equals mu k n. Okay, so then I can get into the force analysis in the parallel to the ramp direction to figure out the acceleration parallel to the ramp. So in this case, um, so my acceleration is certainly down the ramp. I'll just go ahead and put that in real quick. And same for this one. It turned around and started sliding down the ramp and speeding up. So A points that way in both cases. And that makes it so if I call this the plus direction, the analysis will be the, as simple as possible. So it's a little bit of an unusual choice, but I'm calling that the plus direction, and that means these two forces are positive. So I start doing my um, application of Newton's second law, so F net equals MA, and the two forces in the parallel direction, so I could call this like the X direction. The two forces in the parallel direction are mg sine theta and the friction force. And the normal force you can plug in, mg cosine theta. And oops, I kind of like halfway did the next thing I was going to do. The m's cancel out, so it doesn't matter what the mass is. So I end up with ax is equal to g times sine theta plus mu k cosine theta. And I can plug all the stuff in and find a value for a. So that's 9.8 sine of 25 degrees plus 0.15 for the coefficient 
cosine 25 degrees and go to my calculator on that and I get an acceleration of 5.47 meters per second squared so I can tell at a glance this is going to be a bigger acceleration than the acceleration on the way down because these two forces are cooperating to add up to a bigger net force. Let's go ahead and see what it turns out to be. All right, so again, I'm calling down the ramp positive. So I have mg sine theta is positive, but my friction force counts as negative. Plug in the normal force. Cancel the mass out, and I get that AX is G times the quantity sine theta minus mu K cosine theta. All right, so what changed between these two calculations is that, the sine on that mu K cosine theta term. So I get 9.8 times the quantity sine 25 minus 0.15 cosine 25. And I get 2.8, 2.81 out of this. So it's smaller than the first one as we expected it to be.